Oh, and it hot, Sharon? Only a little bit. Oh, 30 odd degrees out there, folks. We've just come back from um, Benidorm. Oh, you got something in your mouth, Black. What have you been yeah. eating? Been eating the ice cream again, haven't you? Yeah. We've just come back from Benidorm, as you well know, and it's hotter here at the moment than it was in Benidorm, isn't it? Yeah. So we thought, what the heck? We're going to make something unusual out of a tin. We're going to make... A Martin concoction. One of my concoctions out of a corned beef tin, corned beef pasta bake. She's a bit, she's a bit un, uh, unsure about it. Mm. Right, well as you well know last week we made a very unusual one of my concoctions again which was the uh, curried beans with luncheon meat, fishing tackle luncheon meat. Or spam. <laughs> or spam if you, if you feel one that way inclined. And a few of the people on your Kasori Ninja Butler's Empire group mm. have actually said how tasty it was. So yeah. Yes, but they also said my sandwich was tasty. Well, of course it was, Sharon. Well, mine was a bit unusual, though. It's not the sort of thing no, that you'd normally no. pick, is it? No. Anyway, we're going to make this little corned beef bake, and um, let's just show you the ingredients. Here are the ingredients to our corned beef pasta bake. Two cups of macaroni pasta, one tin of standard corned beef, one tin of chopped tomatoes, some grated cheddar cheese for the topping, some grated mozzarella cheese, one finely chopped onion, some Italian seasoning, some black pepper to taste. Right, so we're going to be cooking uh, the majority of this on our induction hob here, and we're also going to be finishing it off in the air fryer. And uh, we've got them glass dishes, Sharon, from IKEA. Where is it, baby? Right, so for those of you who have the chefry or was uh, looking into it, this is the IKEA dishes that we bought from IKEA. I don't know if you see the logo on there. Yeah, you can see it just about. And these hold one litre. Now you can buy them with the lid or without the lid. We've had these for ages. And if Sharon just takes the lid off, this is the drawer out of the Chefry AFW20 air fryer. And as you can see, they do go in there. So it, yes, you can use them in the, um, the AFW20 air fryer. The Chefry double drawer or the Chefry jewel. Thank you, baby. Right, so what we're going to do first is to get some water on to get the pasta in. So we've got two cups of pasta here. We may be overdoing it here, folks, but uh, we're just going to get this going. I think we are overdoing yeah, it. Yeah, well, we, we, what's the worst that can happen, shall we? We'll get another bowl out and put it in another bowl. Yeah. Right, so we're going to put that on and get some um, olive oil. Sharon always does this. If you don't do it, folks, or if you don't think it needs to be done, don't do don't it. But do don't, it. don't slate us in the comment no, section. It's just what I do. Yeah, it's and what also, we do. also, while we're talking of olive oil, Oh, you've been sent a gift, haven't I you? I have been sent a beautiful gift. Look at that Bertoli olive oil there, look. And that is from Diane Ray. Thank you very much. This will last a while. Martin said he would like it on his salads and all it's that. It's a so, good quality yeah. oil as well, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, thanks very much for that. That's absolutely fantastic. So that will go into our special drawer. That won't be used as engine oil, Sharon. I won't be using it on my car. I should hope not. <laughs> anyway, right, let's get on with now. this then. Right, okay, so where do we go from here, Sharon? We're going to put the pasta into the water right, and Right, so yeah, we're going to do two cuts, folks. Yeah. This is, what pasta is this? Uh, macaroni pasta. This is macaroni. You can use shells if you like. Whatever pasta you like. Bow ties, all that sort of lot. Farfilé, I think they call that. So we're just going to let that come to the boil. And then we're going to get the other ring on there and we've got a little drop of olive oil in there. And we're just going to start to cook off them onions. In they go. So this is corned beef, folks, and with this one, we've got the little key on the top. Sometimes they're on the side. And uh, we had so many people leave comments about pushing the spam out of the can when we done that one in the last video. Yeah, we are quite aware of that, but that spam, some people said that if you cut the bottom off as well with the tin opener, then you can push it through. Yeah, but we knew that, but that one had a rounded bottom. You couldn't get a tin opener. But a lot of you also said if you pierce the bottom with a knife, that releases the vacuum. But if you probably saw, I actually squeezed it and the vacuum actually did release, but it's just that they were all quick to come out of the can. So this type, we just wind this key around. Now, we also know that if you want it to come out nice and easy, put it in the fridge for a while and it goes hard and it makes it a little bit easier to come out. But we haven't put this in the fridge for the simple reason being, we don't want to cut this into slices. This is all going to be mashed up. And Sharon's just going to turn it out, just stick the knife in it, and as you can see how easy that comes out, look. So that goes into the frying pan. There we go, and that will just get mashed up. I'll give you a fork, hold on. And that just literally gets mashed up, folks. And that will melt down and start to cook out. Mm. 
Right, so we're just gonna add some uh, Italian herbs. You don't have to have these, folks. This is just our preference. And also, we're not putting any salt in, but we're putting black pepper in, as the uh, corned beef is quite a salty meat anyway. So we're not putting any salt in for that reason. Now we'll just give that a little bit more of a stir. Keep it moving. Right, so after about a minute or two, we're just gonna incorporate the uh, chopped tomatoes. And literally, just bring that all together. Right, folks, the macaroni is done now, so I'm just gonna drain that out for Sharon. I've got a calendar over here, or a colander, and just gonna pour that into there, just to drain that off. Right, so that's the uh, pasta nice and drained. We're just going to start to add it into our corned beef mix now, folks, just to incorporate all that pasta into our mix. Right, we just turn that off now, and Sharon's going to take this mozzarella with the heat off and literally stir two good handfuls into that just so that you've got some of that gloopy ooziness coming through when we actually go to spoon it out. So literally the heat that's uh, in the dish itself will just heat that through and it'll start to string. Can you see that, Sharon? Mm. Look at that. Lovely. And now what we're going to do now, we're going to take both of our containers now and we're going to literally load these I'm up. I'm doing that one. Hey? That way for me. Okay, baby. And literally put these in here folks look at oh look look at the stringiness there look so just distribute it evenly folks for you pasta lovers out there i reckon this would be nice cold probably and she'll just sort of leave it push it into the corners but leave it a little bit rustic shall wouldn't you because we're going to be sprinkling this now with grated cheese just literally get to the edges make sure you get them edges folks some mozzarella on the top as well. You ain't. Yep, going for it. You don't today. care, do you? No, I don't today. That's the sort of mood you're in, Sharon. Yep. Just finish off with a little bit of mozzarella as well, folks. Look at that, look. Get it right over. In that corner here, it's a bit bare there, Sharon, look. And also along here, look. Right, we're going to put these in the... Uh, what air fryer are we doing these in? Sorry. We could even freeze one, couldn't well, we? Well, yeah, we'll do that then. If we was going to cook them, folks, we'll get the ninja out, which is over there, or the uh, Chefry yeah, AFW20, which is, the, which, is <laughs> eh, which is in the next door kitchen. Yep. Yeah, They will, as you can see, both go in there. But we're only going to probably be cooking one tonight because um, I think it's only me and baby Frank eating, Sharon, That's isn't it? That's it, yeah. Yeah, we'll just do the one then. The other one can put the lid on that and that can be oh, frozen. Or go in the fridge, throw it tomorrow. Who, who knows? Right, so with this one, we'll just put the lid on it. That's the ideal thing about these IKEA yep. dishes. And that can go straight in the fridge, Sharon, for probably tomorrow. And if not, if we weren't going to have it this week, we'd freeze it, Sharon, wouldn't yeah. we? And the second one. Goes in my baby. Yeah, we're going to go in the old uh, Kasori Jewel Blaze. Just drop that in there. And we're going to put that on for 200 degrees. Don't forget, folks, it's already cooked. 200 degrees for six minutes. Yeah, try six. Okay. I, know, I know it's only two, but it can make a lot of I difference. I know. It, I think the last time we did the last bake, we had to drop the time down, Sharon. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll put that down to six minutes, folks. Bearing in mind, this hasn't been preheated either. So on she goes. Sharon, time to clear up, baby. I oh, know, washing up time and putting that drawer back. Of course you can. There she is, folks, just gloving up. Getting ready. we got six seconds left, folks. Let's have a look. We haven't looked at it, we haven't Oliver Twist is coming in for his dinner. <laughs> Hold on, look. You're it's... a bit early for your dinner, mate. He's coming for his dinner, look. <laughs> Nearly ready. We're just going to have a look at it now, baby Frank. Is that all right? I've got your dinner plate. Of course all you ready. have. Let's have a look, folks. It's just ended. Oh, look at Oh, Sharon. Look at that little baby. Look it out, Shell. That looks absolutely lovely, folks. Oh, Frank. Look at that bubbling away, look. It's your dinner. <laughs> is it your dinner? It's serious, folks. Is it your dinner? Of course it is. He's just been in there playing with his toy from Ian. Of course he has. Right, okay. Let's get this plated up, folks. Oh, 
gosh, he's just whipped that out, folks. Look at that. God, we won't be able to feed it to baby Frank yet. That's a bit too warm for him, I think, but uh, look at that. Absolutely. And can you see the string in it? So that cheese, mm. that mozzarella going through it. Has he, got, has he got enough there, baby, or a bit more for him? Martin, you've got to remember, he's only a baby. He's a big eater, Sharon. Yeah, he's but like... he likes his pudding as well. His fruit for pudding. I don't have the and pudding, yogurt. Sharon. Yeah, but he can. Of course he can. Well, anyway, that's baby French. We'll give that to Mummy Charlotte. Well, and that uh, we'll cool come around and we'll get, I'll get a couple of forks out, Sharon. You just want to use that? Hey? Don't you want to use oh, that? Oh, no, I couldn't put that in my mouth, Sharon. Oh, but you can. Oh, I've you done it before, haven't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. Right, Sharon, you've got a knife, a fork rather. Get it on there. Now, tell me your honest opinion, baby. We've never had this before. Well, no, I'm a bit dubious it's, it's on this. It's an invention, isn't it? It is. I've got a good feeling about it. In you go. Well, mm. is it all right? Would well, you know it was corned beef? No. You wouldn't. That's no. the beauty of it, see? A lot of meats, when they're cooked, taste totally different, Sharon. And I'm not a lover of pasta dishes, but yeah, I could eat that. That is, well, I am eating it. Of course it you is, are. Try one nice. more. Go on. Be careful. I'm because... actually surprised. I was very dubious about this dinner. It's, it's my dinner. In you go. Go on. Full metal jacket, Sharon. Do you want me to hold you up? Right. Right, can I have a go? You like it? I do. Thumbs, Thumbs up. up. Mm. Well, I've never tried it before either, folks, and uh, I'm a bit of a risk taker and a rule breaker as a rule, and this, I think, breaks all the rules, Sharon. Mm. But I'm going in. I like the look of that crusty top it's got. I like the way it's been coloured, and that only took six minutes. Don't forget, it was cooked. We're just browning and crusting off that top here. And I can see, Sharon, that there is a bit of everything now. Mm. And, oh, it's calling my name, Sharon. I'm going in. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, folks. That is a taste sensation. You would not know that that was corned beef. I'll tell you what that tastes like to me. A very good bolognese sauce. It reminds me of bolognese when it was cooking in yeah. the pan, actually. It's a, it tastes like, a, I'll tell you what, you could even do that with sheets of pasta, folks. Mm. Forget about buying mint, although that is quite a dear, isn't it, for a can of that now? Yeah. But you saw how much we've got there. That's a litre container, and we've also got another litre container, which we put away. And I'm sure you could do the same with pasta sheets. But you know what I'd do? If I, if I was making this some Martin, and just Martin and not Frank, I'd actually put some chilli sauce in that. Oh. You've been terrorising me, yeah. You might be a bit dubious about that, folks, but... I was, and there's nothing to that be That is superb. Mm. Absolutely superb, folks. Girl, are you crazy? Yeah, you must be crazy. I've been thinking lately, lately it's you. You stole your peace, put it on me. 